I'm at the dndbeyond.com. Oh, yeah. Um, so what you're going to want to do is in the top right-hand corner where it says register, go and register for the D&D Beyond site. Because okay. once you once you have an, an account, this is where we're going to create your character. Okay. So I can create it with either Google or with Apple, or I can sign in with one of these other YouTube, Twitch, Discord. Uh, Let's try with YouTube. Okay, character builder. Okay, so let's begin. Um, and we're going to go straight into character builder. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so you. it looks like I have three choices here. Standard, quick build, and randomized. But we, we're going to go through the standard, which is create a character by making choices using a step-by-step -step approach. Yeah, that's that's a good uh, that's a good way for beginners to do it. Okay, character name. Um, I can always change it. I think. Yeah, you can always get all sorts of suggestions for names by hitting the randomize button. For now, I'm going to leave it on that one. Sounds good. Okay, what are the sources? I don't understand this. So this is different uh, content that can be used. Your options there are limited based on having a free account. If you got a subscription then there'd be more material that would appear there that you could use. What's the difference between the milestone and XP? If uh, the DM uh, wants everybody to level up and say, uh, um, okay, this is, you know, we're going to level up now. So that would be like a, a milestone approach. XP would be keeping track of things that earn experience points. If, you're, if your characters have done X, Y, and Z, Award them all so many experience points. And then you can either uh, roll randomly for your hit points or go with a fixed amount every time you level up. Maybe in most games, people would just leave it at fixed and not okay. worry about managing it manually. So let's just say use encumbrance because I think okay. it's, it's going to figure it for us anyway. Okay. Coins. <laughs> Coins do not count. Oh, okay. Against, against your total weight, and you can toggle that on and off, um, depending on what what the DM wants. And yeah. Now we can go to next. Next. Okay. Okay. So now we're up to the choose the race. Okay. So we can filter all race sources. Um, so we got the basic rules, elemental evil players companion, and the player's handbook. Yeah, so these are the options that you get with a um, a free account. I guess I'll go with an elf, and then but I'm gonna go with uh, a wood elf. I All think. right, and then I'm gonna choose race. Okay, and uh, gives you some information there about uh, about uh, wood elves, and then so I think these are already selected for you, but you might click on the plus just to kind of see what happens. Okay, so dark vision. Yeah, okay, this gives you a description. Go and next. Next, yeah. Okay, okay, choose class. Yeah, here are the classes. Okay. Um, You're going to choose something oh, woodsy to I'm, go to go uh, type. Barbarian. Go against type. Oh, okay, yeah, barbarian, that's a good, that's. I'm gonna, yeah, I was like, I'm going to go against type. I'm going to choose a barbarian. Here's a wood elf barbarian. All right. Um, so now you're getting things highlighted that it wants you to take a, a look at. So okay. pro proficiencies is highlighted. So if okay. you click on that, you see uh, there's some already automatically chosen for you, but then there, it wants you to choose two barbarian skills. Okay. Okay. So I, my choices are anim I can choose from animal handling, athletics, intimidation, nature or survival i want to ch intimidation he's not friendly <laughs> um and then survival yeah. intimidation and survival those sound good okay and so i think yeah now there's another plus for down at the bottom but that's that's for um once you've advanced in levels right. okay so next oh abilities so choose a generation method. Standard array, manual, yeah. and then point by. Standard array is going to give you a, like a standard 
uh, set of numbers. It's really a good place to start out. Okay. So now what you have is in each one of these drop boxes underneath the names of the attributes or ability scores, uh, you have those numbers listed out. And once you choose one of them, it's chosen and it's not available when you click on the other boxes underneath the other uh, ability. That's a choice. Okay. Yeah. The only uh, thing, if you uh, if you decide at some point, oh, I want to switch those two, uh -huh. you have you have to go back and unselect each one of them. Those um, racial bonuses. So, for example, if fifteen is your highest, it it is going to factor in. I think. Are you going to when you click on dexterity? Do you just see fifteen or do you see a seventeen? Uh, fifteen. I have, okay. Yeah. okay, but if you choose it, then when it appears, I think it will appear as a 17. Okay, um, yeah, I'm just making sure because I know a lot of people who are, might be going to be watching this might have some of the same questions. Uh, can you, okay, strength is uh, obviously strength. My guy is an elf barbarian, um, and his, I have chosen... Um, survival intimidation i feel like he would want a very strong strength i'm gonna put 14 here okay so i see here that it broke down like my strength was started out at 14 modifier was plus two I yeah, yeah so each um uh, each score yields a modifier okay uh, so like within a certain range so like 14 to 15 if you have a anywhere in there from a 14 or a 15 it's going to give you a plus two but mm -hmm. what is dexterity uh, dexterity is kind of a combination of your kind of physical grace uh fine motor control skills to a certain extent maybe even speed i mean not not so much speed like how fast you can run but just kind of your your basic quickness of movement okay and then constitution Constitution is um, how uh, how hardy, how healthy you are. Okay, um, and the um, intelligence, of course, is like how I get, I'm assuming like how smart you are. Yeah, yeah, it's intelligence with magic users, intelligence with language, mm -hmm. that 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 sort of thing. Versus where wisdom is how well you're using your smarts. You know, wisdom often is associated. I guess uh, with clerics and the little saying, intelligence is knowing that uh, a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing yes. not to put it in the fruit salad. And and from my other gaming experience, and I'm just making sure that this is the same here. Charisma is how well you uh, can speak to other people. Yeah, it's kind of your uh, personal presence score in a way. I mean, okay. it's a, a, a strength of personality. Charisma needs to be really close to strength. I think intimidation gets tied to charisma. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and so. I, I feel like he need a strong charisma too. But I'm gonna put 15 here. I'm kind of thinking. Okay. Because uh, I have learn. no idea on the rest of them. I just know strength and charisma, and I think that's the way I did it for my other one. I I knew my first two, maybe the, my third one, but the other two, I was like, that's really the good way to go when you're creating a character. Start with like, what are you confident about? What are you have a clear concept, and you move from what you know to what you don't know. So we go to next, and we're going to description, right? Custom yeah. background. Okay, so here, oh, I see. So, um, acolyte, criminal or spy, folk hero, a haunted one, a noble, a sage, or a soldier. Backgrounds can take you in all different sorts of uh, directions. And in, in some ways, you can look at background as what the character is, was kind of raised in. You could also uh, <laughs> you could also look at at it as kind of like, well, what was your previous work experience before going into barbarianing? I mean, what is an acolyte? Do you know? An, an acolyte, uh, kind of like the classic altar boy. A, a sage. That's a like almost. Isn't that like a like a monk or something? Um. Well, sort of like a like a wise person. Cl classically, sages in the game have been like. Uh, you spent years learning the lore of the multiverse. 
So uh, you were a student of obscure things once upon a time. If you choose, say, for example, sage as your background, well, then you're going to you're going to have proficiencies in arcana that you'd have historical knowledge from your study. And then um, it would also let you choose. Looks like looks like you get to choose two languages as well from the list. Each one of these backgrounds then presents you with other choices that are related. I feel like I, part of me, if I'm going for like extreme opposite backgrounds, I feel like may have been raised in a noble family and then went like, I, I, I want to get rid of this wealthy life and, you know, yeah. So I think I'm going to, for this thing, I think I'm going to go ahead. Oh, you understand wealth, power and privilege. Um, okay. So, and then it says work with your DM to come up with an appropriate title and determine how much authority that title carries. These details help establish your family and your title as features of the world of the campaign. Skill proficiencies, history, persuasion. And then I get to choose to, and then this one says I have to work with the DM because I guess because I'm a noble. Right, you're right, right. It's gonna that that's gonna require some some thinking on the DM's part. But I mean, I think it's fine to choose it because it, like I said, a DM can always say, oh, well, this isn't gonna come into play in the game either you know, for the foreseeable future or right now or whatever. Go talk to the DM now, you know, and say, hey, I want to choose this. Um, yeah, I so think most DMs want to say yes. They, they may have to say yes in different ways or they may have to figure something out. Okay, so tool proficiencies. It says dice set. Like, well, dice, you know. You, 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 know, how to, you know how to play games with dice and you have dice. Dragon chess set. Um, I guess they didn't want to just put um, uh, mundane chess, so they they put dragon chess. I don't even know what dragon chess is. Playing card set. Playing cards again, just a generic choice. And three dragon ante set. Three dragon ante is actually a game that Wizards created and sells. So <laughs> I like Wizards, so I'm going to do that. Ooh, languages. So this one, I have um, Abyssal, which is kind of a demon language. Yeah. Um, a Celestial, which is angelic mm -hmm. language. Draconic, which is a uh, dragon language. Dwarvish. Giant. Gith. There's also Sylvan, which might be a good choice for uh, oh, a, wood, okay. a wood elf. Um, Sylvian. I'm, I'm going to pick that one because you suggested it. I only know those up top two. Uh, well, a couple of them. But uh, I'm just going to go with Sylvian because that's something different. Um, and I'm going to hit next. Apparently, I have to do... Okay, I have to choose one of these two. Mm -hmm. A great axe or a martial melee weapon. And then you just get these nice series of choices you can make. Sickle. A scroll of pedigree. Yeah, because you're a noble, now you can say, well, here's my genealogy. Okay, next. Okay, now we're at... Okay, so view character sheet. Now, uh, one thing you're going to see is, uh, is your weapons aren't appearing. It kind of wants you to go in and equip uh, your weapons so that they appear there. So what we're going to want to do is go back to equipment. Manage uh, equipment, manage equipment up there in the top right. And there we are, there we are. That's what I'm looking for. So if you click on javelin, you click on sickle, click on whip. See, now if you go back to um, your other page here and go to actions and click on, ah, see there? Okay. So that, I mean, you've got, the, you've got the basics of your character set up. You can always go back and type descriptions of yourself. To, to fill your character out more. If you have trouble finding what you're looking for on the page, there's a couple of different ways you can go at it. You can click the control F. Oh, right here at the bottom. There we are, yeah. yeah. Um, different browsers that may, uh, may appear in different places. Uh, you can also go choose to export. You have to go back. There we are, yeah, yeah. So that's that's. So you can export right here and download a copy in a different tab. It um, won't it won't be clickable. But you could like print it out or something. 
up in the top left hand, again, you've got two things. Top left hand, you've got shadow box there for uh, for a portrait. And as far as going back at any point, um, that anvil over to the right will take you. Oh, yeah, there they, they have some they're going to let you use uh, yeah. right away. OK, um, and there we go. There she is. Purple hair. Lillian. Did you point to the to the character builder anvil um, that I was talking about? Yeah, just so people see it. Yeah, that that will take you back whenever you need okay. to. At the very, it's always been there. You have all these cool resources here on the D and D Beyond site, but there is a uh, link here. There is a new player guide right here. Is a creating a character deal. What we did was just make a really just quick video we've gone through one through five there in their list i was going to point out one thing for anyone who's watching the video is that there is not going to be a, a red dice with a b on it we have another step to do to complete and that's going to connect to um roll 20 we'll make a video for later mm -hmm. yeah okay well thank you Good very deal. much oh my pleasure it's always fun to make characters